another opportunity to learn your word as we look through the Bible to know how Christians have been named or designated in the scriptures. May you help us to understand the gravity of those titles and names that Christians have been uh, appointed to be addressed as. May you help us to appreciate the truths that it reveals to us. Thank you for all those who have come, though it's a rainy day. We thank you that many have come and also we pray for those who are listening to us on the internet that the word of God may unite our hearts and cause us to rejoice and know our calling and purpose on earth that we may fulfill them for the glory of our God and thus we may rejoice in this opportunity. In Jesus' name with thanksgiving we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, welcome everyone once again and let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew where how Jesus referred to all his followers. <clears throat> so let's go to the Gospel of Matthew and uh, we shall look at chapter 5. Gospel of Matthew chapter 5. Okay, in, in chapter 5, Jesus deliberately explained the duties of those who are God's children or God's people. Uh, we know that from verses 1 to 12, uh, Jesus, spoke of, Jesus spoke of the characteristics of those who are going to be in the kingdom of God. We call it Beatitudes. Uh, beatitude means the blessed sayings and uh, happy sayings because each of those verses from verse 3 onwards all the way to verse 12 speak of blessedness or happiness of Christians and then having explained uh, who are those real citizens of the kingdom of God uh, Jesus made this statement in verse 13 Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. So we are called the salt of the earth. This is a name given to us by Christ, salt. Would you like to be called salt? <laughs> And what sort of salt? Well, let Jesus explain it to us. He says, "Ye are the salt of the earth. In other words, every Christian, as far as Christ is concerned, is a, is a salt. No Christian can say, oh, uh, I don't want to be a salt. No, you cannot. If you are a child of God, then you have to understand that God has called you to be the salt of the earth. Now, what's the purpose for saying that we are the salt of the earth? Now, very interesting uh, that the Lord says, if the salt have lost his savor, means its flavor or taste, wherewith shall it be salted? You know, once the salt uh, loses its flavor there is no way it can be once again uh, made salty yeah, it's gone it lost its flavor or savor and so it's good for nothing it is just wasting space it's just useless worthless and it will be just thrown out for people to trod upon in other words, Christians are like salt. There is no time we can ever say, I have, I, God has created me or redeemed me, uh, but I don't know for what. We are to be the saver of the earth. Now, what does that mean? When you are a Christian, the world will know that you are a Christian 
because of your flavor or your savor. You have certain characteristics that make you stand out in the earth. Uh, you cannot uh, say, I'm a Christian, and then you look like the rest of the world. You impact the earth. You give it taste. You, you are the one whom God has appointed to help this earth to have some taste. A, a Christless, or oh, I should, sh shall I also say, uh, a world that is without Christians is a terrible world. <coughs> Just imagine what would this earth be if there is not a single Christian here. When I said Christian, I don't mean Christian in name, but a true, real Christian. What will the world be like? I tell you, it will be like the world of Noah, which was destroyed by the flood. It will be like Sodom and Gomorrah, where there was only one godly man, Lot. It is ready to be judged. It has no flavor, no savor that God wants. It has fun. It has lots of enterprising <coughs> spirit. A lot of activities going on. But nothing pleases God. It is a miserable place to be. It's a wicked place to be. And so God appointed us on this earth to be the savor of the earth. Not savor of the church but savor of the uh, the church is the savor of the earth in other words the earth and the humanity cannot understand the truth of God the righteousness of God if Christians do not <coughs> carry out their calling as salt of the earth and I must be deliberate therefore to avail myself to the world to know what it is to be a child of God or what it is to be a Christian <coughs> how can we, we be that how can we be in a position that we have so much influence on the earth well some preachers would say well what is salt salt adds uh, taste to our food it preserves our food it is even sanctifying, it purifies things, it, 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 it preserves meat from corroding or degenerating. So it has many properties. Now all these, all these uh, functions of salt will not be there once it loses its savor. So like salt, we are supposed to be purifying, we are supposed to be preserving. <coughs> We are supposed to add taste to the world. Christian life is not a tasteless life. It is not a life without impact. It impacts very powerfully. In your workplace, in your home, wherever you are, in that part of the world where Christ has appointed you, you must pray, Lord, make me the kind of individual that you want me to be, that I may impact the people around me. I'm glad that the Lord has used you in many ways and the reason why we have people coming week after week and you try to bring them to the Bible study to know Christ. And I want to... Eh, who is this? Excuse me. Uh, so, um, I want you to understand that uh, when we are in very... Uh, very difficult circumstances uh, the Lord has a purpose for us to be there don't think that it's time for you to quit or to run uh, in those peculiar circumstances it can be at home it can be in your workplace you must pray Lord you put me here for a purpose let me fulfill it and if you were to just remember, just take a look if you can, verse 3 onwards, the Christian characteristics. You have to be poor in the spirit. You are poor in the spirit, meaning to say you must be humble. 
You must be very, very uh, lowly of heart before the Lord, not prideful. You acknowledge that you cannot do anything without God. So when you are appointed in this earth to be the salt, when I mean, you find it difficult, you just acknowledge that to the Lord. Lord, it is not in me to be patient. It's not in me to be forgiving. It is not in me to be uh, loving. I tend to be you know, the opposite of all these things. And these struggles that I'm facing is proving to me that I'm not up to the mark. And you, what do you do? You accept the poverty of spirit before the Lord. The moment we accept the poverty of spirit, I mean poverty of uh, our spirituality or morality or whatever, there the Lord start to work. The Lord, you're calling on the Lord. And that's why he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. But if you say, oh, everything is right. You know, I get everything right. These people are all bad. Now, it may be true they are bad, but you're right. But then how you behave, if it is in a violent, unforgiving way, then you are also equally bad. If somebody badmouths me in the church, I can choose to react in any way I like. I can choose to be quiet. Just don't bother, let him say. Or I can call the brother aside and say, Brother, why do you say this? These are not right things. Explain to them. Or I can retaliate with anger. There are many things I can do. I can even punch him if I want. There are many, many options in front of me. But let's say this man not only really maligned me, but, uh, but even come straight at me like this. My, my heart can be provoked. As we say, my blood can boil. Now there's a, that's the time. The earth is watching me, what kind of man I am. God put me in that situation that my response to that difficult circumstance may influence the world. Not only the man who opposed me, but my, my response to that would also give a pattern for the rest to behave. You know, I, I sometimes tell my wife and we remind ourselves how we talk to one another is going to give a pattern for our children how they should behave. Sometimes you look at our, your own children, they behave exactly as you behave. The way you talk to your husband, the way your husband talk to you will be the way they are going to talk to you. If mothers are going to shout and scream at the father, I mean by the husband, surely the children are going to do the same to you. If the father doesn't care about the, 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 the wife, I mean, the husband doesn't care about the wife and their children. The children are going to have a very snobbish attitude toward the father, doesn't care about the father also. And uh, the reason why I said it, so when we have, let's say, very harrowing time problems and issues at home, we must pray, Lord, I'm incapable of responding to my spouse correctly. Give me grace. Because we are supposed to handle that situation in a godly way so our children would know next time when they are in that trouble. I bring up my daughter to be a good m mother and wife next time. Not just to make them pass all levels and go to uni. That's not the reason why I bring up my kids. Do you agree? Why do I bring up my two boys? To be a good husband next time to their wives. And how would they be good husbands if they look at me and I'm not influencing them to be a godly husband? So my response to my wife, no matter how tough it is, has to teach my children, my boys, how next time when they have a conflict in their marriage life, they should behave. I'm trying to illustrate this point. There is no time a Christian can say, I don't bother, I'm going to burst out, I'm going to do what I want. Cannot. Because you are God's means to influence the rest. You are the salt. God doesn't say that to the university professors. You are the salt of the earth. God doesn't say that to politi politicians. God doesn't say that to wealthy people. God says to Christians, ye are the salt of the earth. We live out the gospel of Christ. 
the love of God that we receive, the forgiveness of God we receive, the patience of God we receive, the benevolence of God that we receive, we want it to be given to the world by our behavior. So my dear brothers and sisters, we will go to the next verse which says that we are the light of the world next week. But take note of this. Is your life full of flavor? Is it taste giving? Or is it making it worse, bitter, useless? If uh, my wife married me because she thought I'm a Christian and I'm going to be a pastor, and then after marriage, she said, what kind of pastor is this? What kind of Christian is it? I lost my savor. so let's pray Lord thou has called me a salt of the earth and teach me to be that I don't have the power to do it may you give me the grace this is a task we cannot set aside because Jesus said you are this is your calling you cannot sidestep or ignore this so may the Lord help us the high calling we have, the great responsibility we have. If we don't carry out our responsibility, we are only good to be trod upon. So in our special callings, let's not lose heart. You may have a very poor family. Maybe you have many financial needs. Never seem to get out of your problems. Or maybe you have a very difficult relationship. Maybe your workplace is not easy. And you may be wondering, how come uh, every new job I take is very bad? How come it's all like that? Please understand, this world is not supposed to be a pleasant place. It's a difficult world. It is our duty to show them how to overcome sin and the consequences of sin that we see around us by trusting in Christ. So go from here knowing that it is the Lord who said to you that you are the salt of the earth and He will help you to do that. So keep relying on Him. And don't forget your duties. Take it upon yourself joyfully. Don't murmur, don't complain. Give yourself in prayer and the Lord will make you for sure the salt of the earth. Christians cannot be anything but a taste-giving preserving, purifying world. If we don't act according to our Christian calling, you know what? We will add to the corruption of this world. And that's not why God saved us. So may God help us. It's a high calling, a very noble calling. And let's not doubt it. It is for this purpose Christ called us. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this time that thou hast given to us to consider who we are. Christ calls us salt of the earth. May you help us, O oh Lord. So often we shrugged away from our calling and our duty. We said this is difficult. We said we are not going to persevere. We said and done things that are not truly honorable in your sight. May you forgive us, we pray. And we also thank you, though we are not worthy that thou hast regarded us in Christ Jesus and chosen us to be your light bearers, your uh, taste bearers in this world. Lord, we pray that our words will be sweet and God-honoring. It will comfort someone. It will exhort someone. It will rebuke the wrong ways of the people. And we thank you that thou hast once again rebuked us and corrected us and reminded us of our calling. May we now leave to perform our calling with wholeheartedness. Help us, O Lord, and grant us the strength and grace we need according to thy knowledge of our weakness. So minister to us that we may minister to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.